Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to creatively use Divi's new row alignment options. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let me show you how we managed to create this. Okay, so before we get started, why not go through the design that we'll be going through in today's tutorial. So this is the final design that we are aiming for. Now for this, we don't need any elements like CSS and the like, but you're going to need your own images. And also, if you'd like to achieve the same colors and the same fonts and layouts, then you would need to go to our post, which I'll link to, which I'll link to in the show notes below. Now, that post will have the exact settings that we're going to use throughout this tutorial. Okay, so in this design, we're going to start with the primary menu bar. So let's come over here to Divi, click on Theme Customizer, and then we're going to go to the primary menu bar. So click on Header Navigation click on primary menu bar. So first of all, we're going to hide the logo image and we're going to set the menu height to 30. Okay, so coming over here to the letter spacing, we're going to set this to minus one. Our font is going to be Leto, so I'm going to scroll down until I find our font. Now this font is quite nice because it is it looks uh, very elegant, but you can choose any font that you like. So I'm going to select Leto here. We're going to make it all caps. Okay, so our text color, let's set this to white. And also, in fact, I have to drag these all the way up to make sure that we get a solid white because if this um, is right here in the middle or anywhere below here, it is the transparency. So that shows that it's a full color. Okay, so the active link color, again, this, ne this needs to be set to white. Next, we're gonna go to our background color. Now this is gonna be a transparent, uh, transparent color, so I'm just gonna paste my RGBA value in here. Now, if you can't get your RGBA value, all you need to do is to drag the slider, because this will allow you to go into RGBA, because normally it is set to a hexadecimal color, but the, the moment you drag it like this, you then get the RGBA value for the transparency. So the drop down again, is the same thing. Uh, this needs to be set to a transparent color. So I'm going to paste my value in here. So once we're done with that, now we can go ahead and save and publish. So next, let's build our main page and start adding all our elements for our page design. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go back into my dashboard. So I'm going to close this and we're going to come over here and click on add new to add a new page. So I'm just going to call this page row design. Now you can name the page whatever you want. So next I'm going to click on use the Divi Builder, use Visual Builder. So before we get started with anything, we are going to add our background colors for our section. So I'm going to come over here to this gear icon, click on background. And for this, we're going to need a, a gradient. So I'm going to click the second tab, click the plus button. And I'm going to click this first icon here to select my color and paste my first color. And then I'm going to come over here to the second color and this needs to be a black so I'm just going to select it here in fact it needs to be a solid black next we're going to come over here to our gradient direction make sure it's selected to linear and then on the gradient direction it's 180 that's fine and then here for the start and end position it needs to be set at 50 percent and 50 percent now you can see as I'm adding these these um, values here what effect I'm getting here. So you can always try around uh, the different uh, percentages to see what you need to achieve. But in this case, this, exact, this is exactly the design that we need. Okay, it's time now to save. And then we need to go into the row settings. So I'm gonna click this gear icon, click on background. Now here we need to add our overlay color. So I'm just gonna add this plus button to add our color in here. I'm gonna paste my color and as I mentioned before, um, this, these colors here, if you want to use the exact values, you can find these in the post, which I'll link in the show notes below. Okay, so that's the color we're going to use for our overlay. But you can choose any color you want, depending on your design. So next, we're going to add our image. So I'm going to click this third tab to add our image. Click the plus button. So I'm going to choose my image, and this is the image I'm going to go with. Now, if you'd like the exact... Um, dimensions. The image size I'm using here is 1000 by 667 pixels. Okay, so now that I have my image selected, I'm going to click upload an image. So you can see here, my image is now in the background, but we're not done yet because we need to make sure that this image is positioned correctly. So the first thing here, we need to make sure that it's set to cover. 
So here we can see that it's all covering the whole image, I mean the whole row. And then we're going to come over here to background image position and it needs to be set to top center. On the bottom here, make sure it's not repeating because if it's repeating, that means that um, if the image is not big enough, it will show another image if you're looking at it on a wider screen. So that's not what you want. So let's come over here to our background image blend because this is where we're going to get that effect that we um, um, chose when we selected our first blending color. So let's start with multiply and see what that looks like. So you can see here that this is added this blend, which looks really nice. So next we're going to go into our design tab and click on alignment. So we need to make sure that this row is aligned to the center. So I'm going to click on row align center. Now in order for this to really show on our page nice and big, we need to make sure that this is set to full width. So I'm going to come over here to sizing and make this row full width. Next we're going to come over here to our spacing and add our custom padding. So I'm going to add 300 to the top just to add a bit more space so we can get to see the image. And then I'm going to also add 300 to the bottom. So now we can start, now we're starting to see the image. But you can adjust these figures here depending on your design and what you need to achieve because this, these are the uh, designs that uh, fit my screen. So you can adjust these the way you want. Okay, now we need to add a text module so we can add some text into this row. So I'm going to save this for now. And then I'm going to come over here, click this plus button, click single row, and then we're going to add a text module. So here we're going to select um, the text and the font we're going to use here is Arvo. So I'm going to select this here. I'm going to enter the, the sizes for my text font size. So I'm going to click this, gear, this icon here, which has the mobile uh, device. Now the reason why I'm clicking this is because we can set different sizes for different um, devices. So for example, on the desktop, we can uh, really choose a large uh, font. And then when it's being viewed on a tablet, it will have a smaller size because obviously the screen is much smaller. So this enables you to have a consistent design, which is pleasing both on desktops and also uh, other devices. So here I'm going to enter 67 for my desktop, click on the tablet. I want to enter 47 and on the smartphone, let's add 33. So our text color is going to be set to white because white really stands out on this dark background. So our line height is going to be 1 EM. Our text orientation is going to be centered. Now let's go into the uh, content tab and add our text and see what it looks like now that we've entered all these settings. So I'm going to click on the content tab, click on text and I'm going to paste my text in here. So now we can see that it looks really nice, it's bold, and then when you take a look at it on different devices, we can see that it's going to be adjusted based on the settings that we added here. Now it's time to add the second text, mo text module. So I'm going to save this for now. Again, I'm going to add a new module. So this time I'm going to start by entering my text in here, like that. And then I'm going to click on the design tab to start adjusting all our settings. So I'm going to start over here with the text and then our text color that needs to be set to white. So I'm going to come over here and set that to white so we can see it in the background. Right. So here we can see it's aligned to the left and that's not what we need. Let's align it to the right. I mean to the middle. So I'm going to click this button here and now we can see that it's centered. For consistency, we're going to use the same font that we used which is Leto. So I'm going to come over here to our text, select my font. And then for the sizes, we're going to do what we did before. I'm going to click this icon here. So for our desktop, I'm going to set this to 25. Click on the tablet. I'm going to set this to 18. And on the smartphone, I'm going to set it to 16. So this is looking good so far. Next, we're going to add our second section. So I'm going to save this for now. Come back over here, click the plus button to add our second section. And this is going to be a regular section. So for here, for this section, we're going to need two rows. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to start with working on the design of the section. So we're not going to enter our modules yet. Okay, so we need to go into the section settings. So let's start off with our background. So I'm going to click on background and we're going to click the second tab for our gradient. Click the plus button and we're going to add our first color. So I'm going to paste it in here. Add my second color. Again, I'm going to paste it in here. And then we're going to come over here to our gradient direction, set this to 184. 
And then finally here for the start and end position, we're gonna set it to 20% and 20%. Okay, so let's go ahead and save. And then we're gonna come over here to our row settings and we're gonna add a background color. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to add a different versions of our mobile devices. So we need this layout to look different on a tablet and also on a mobile device. But to make things easier, we are going to be duplicating these and just changing the, the, values, in, the values in there. Okay, so now we've added our background color. That's looking good. Next, let's go into the design. Click on alignment. And we need this row alignment to be set to the right, like that. Next, we're going to go to sizing and make this row full width because we need this to cover pretty much most of the page. Okay, so next we're going to go into the spacing and we're going to add a custom top of 300. And then on the column 2 padding, we're going to add 35, 35, 150, and 35. Now it's time to save and then we're going to start adding all our modules. So I'm going to start over here with our divider module. I'm going to click on it here. Show divider. We're going to set that to yes. Let's move on to the design because we need to set the divider color. So I'm going to click on color and we're going to set this to white. And then next we're going to come over here to the styles. Make sure that it's set to solid and top. And then we're going to click the sizing and we're going to set this weight to 3. Next the height here needs to be set to 0. Then the width needs to be set to 20% and it needs to be aligned to the right. Okay, so we're going to click on save and so right below the divider module we need to add our text module. So if you can't see it here, all you need to do is to come over here to our wireframe view and then below the divider we just need to click this plus button here and add our text module. Select text. So I'm going to come over here to our design tab, click on text. Our text font is going to be Arvo. Text size is going to be 30. And our text color is going to be black. And then further down, our line height needs to be set to 1.6. And this needs to be aligned center. So just so that I can see my text, I'm just going to come over here to my content tab, click on text, and I'm going to paste my text in here like that. Back to the design, click on the text. And then here, we just need to make sure that this is over here to the left. Okay, so we're going to clone our divider. And then we're going to set our module alignment to the left. So I'm going to click this gear icon here. In fact, we're going to save first. Click the gear icon for the divider. Design. Click on sizing. And then alignment, left. Okay, and then we're going to save. We're going to go back into our view mode. So what we're going to do next is we're going to add our color to our set, to our row. So I'm going to click this gear icon, click on our background color here, and we're going to add this background like that. Then we're going to go ahead and save. And then what we need to do here is just we just need to make sure that our text is between these two dividers. So all I have to do is just to drag it between the two. Now if you can't see exactly what you're doing here, always go back to the wireframe view and then you can just do it easily by just dragging it between the two, like that. Okay, so back to our, to our desktop view. Now it's time to add our second text module. So I'm going to click this plus button here, click on text to, so to select our text module. And then here in the text tab I'm going to paste my text, like that. We're going to come over here to design click on text to enter the settings and then here we just need to make sure that this text orientation is set to centered and then our text font is supposed to be set to Leto 14 pixels is fine and our line height is fine so I'm gonna go ahead and save okay so coming over to here to the second column we're going to add our image module so I'm gonna select my image module click on upload image now the image that I need is already in my media library but if you don't have your images in the media library all you have to do is to click upload files and then navigate to where that image is on your computer so I'm gonna select my image here click upload an image so you can see here my image is enter is, is uh, now in place let's go on to the design tab because here we're going to do some more adjustments so first we're gonna go into spacing and then show space below image. We need to make sure that it's set to yes. 
And then for our custom margin, we need to make sure that this is set to minus 300. Now by setting it to minus 300, you can see what's happening here. It moves the image up. So if I remove the minus, you can see here, it's adding that um, margin to the bottom. So by adding the minus, it just pushes everything up. And then for the left, we're going to set it to minus 80. Okay, so we're done with this. Next, we're going to add our text module. So I'm going to come over here, click this plus button to add our text module. I'm going to search for it because I found that this is much easier than scrolling through the whole thing. So this is one of the uh, beauties of the front end editor. We can just search for our modules and then they just come up as soon as you start typing the first letters. So I'm going to select my text module here. And then we're going to come over here to the design, click on text and then make sure that our font is set to Leto and our font size is set to 14 and everything else here seems to be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and save. Okay, so next we're going to add our social media follow. So I'm just going to search for our social media. So what we're trying to do here is just to add some social media follow icons just below this text. So we're going to start off by adding our plus button here to add our network. So I'm going to start with Facebook. Now here is where you add your link to your Facebook URL, but I'm not going to add that for now. I'm just going to add a blank link. And then I'm going to click this little icon here to go back, add my second network. And this one's going to be Twitter. Again on the link, I'm going to add a blank link. Click back. And then add my, add my final one. And this one is going to be, let's say LinkedIn. But uh, obviously, in your case, you want to be adding these social media links that relate to what you've registered. So I'm going to come over here, click back, and then I'm going to go into design and make sure that these are aligned to the center. So now we can see that it's looking consistent. Okay, so I'm going to save. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to add the white background to this right column. So to do that, we need to come over here to this gear icon to access our row settings, click on background, and then we're going to come here to background two. Okay, so click this plus button here to add our color. I'm just going to add my white. And you can see instantly that I've added this new design and this looks really, really beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and save. So next, this is time now to set our views for our different devices. So all we're going to do here is uh, to clone these uh, rows and then adding this, uh, the settings that we need for the different devices. So what I'm going to do next here is I'm going to do, I'm going to do it for uh, the tablet and then uh, through those settings you can just go ahead and do the mobile device. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come back into my row settings, click the advanced tab, visibility, and for this, uh, we want this to show only on the desktop. So we're going to select phone and tablet and leave desktop open. So that means that anyone that views this will only view this design here on the desktop. So let's go ahead and save. We're going to duplicate this. So now that I've uh, cloned this, I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is to switch my columns. So I'm going to, in fact, to do this, I'm going to come back here into my wireframe view. So I need to move everything that's here to the left and ev all the stuff that's here to the right. So this is just going to be a drag and drop. Okay, so that's the three and then I'm going to move these over to the right. Like that. Now, the reason why I'm using this wireframe view is because it makes it easier to move the stuff over because these are just blocks. So rather than use the visual uh, builder, you can't really see where you're dragging your things. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my desktop view. And we can see now that things are now opposite, which is good. So again, I'm going to come back into here and um, add our row colors. So I'm going to click this row settings click on background, and then we're going to swap this. So instead of having this, so let's add our background color here. We're going to set this to white to get this. I'm going to save this for now. 
Okay, so let's go back into our row settings. And we're going to go into design, click on, click on spacing. So for our column one, we need to be adding these 35 pixels like that, and then delete all this for column two. So we also need to change our alignment to center. So we're gonna come over here to alignment and then select centered. So now it's all centered. So for now, we're gonna save and then we're going to add our background color here to this row so it matches with the background. So I'm gonna go back in here into my settings click on background, and then I'm gonna come over here to background two, click this gear icon and add my color like that. So you can see now that this is the opposite of what we have here on the top. And then I'm gonna come over here to my advanced tab, click on visibility, and this time we're gonna do the opposite. We need this to show, you know, I mean to be disabled on the desktop, so we're going to make sure desktop is selected. So when I select desktop, it means that the uh, visibility is not on the desktop. Okay. Okay, now it's time to build our third section. So our third section is is uh, going to have majority of the settings that we have in this second section. So that's going to save us a lot of time. Okay, so we're going to come down here and click this plus button to add our section. It's a regular section. I'm going to close this for now because we need to start off by entering our section settings. Okay, so in the section settings here, we're going to click on background click the, the uh, gradient plus button to add our first color. I'm going to paste my color here, click on the second color picker to add our second color. I'm going to paste my color in here. Our direction is going to be 184. And then the start and end position is going to be set to 30% for the start and 30% for the ending. Next on the section settings here, we're going to add a section setting of minus 200 pixels. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and we're gonna add our minus 200 to the custom margin, like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and save, and then we're gonna go into our row settings. In fact, we're gonna add our row, add two columns, and then we're gonna go into our row settings by clicking this gear icon, click on background. So for our column one background, we need to make sure that this is set to black, and then we're gonna come over here to design, click on spacing, and column one padding is going to be set to 35 pixels throughout. Next, we're going to come over here to the row alignment and set it to left. So let's save and we are going to add our image. Click this plus button here to add our image module. I'm going to search for it. Click on the icon and then I'm going to upload my image. And this time the image I'm going to upload is right here. And as I mentioned before, if you don't have your images in place, all you need to do is to uh, click on this upload link and navigate to the folder that you have these images on your computer. Click upload an image. Next, we're going to go into the design tab, click on spacing, and then I'm going to add minus 150 here for the uh, custom margin, and for the right, it's going to be minus 80. So for now, let's save, and then here we're going to add our divider. So I'm going to click this plus button here to add our divider module. Search for it, click on the link. I'm going to show the divider. I'm going to click on design. And then over here on the spacing, we're going to add 200 top for our custom margin. So for our color here, we're going to use black. So I'm going to save this for now and I'm going to add my text module. So I'm going to click on this icon here to get my text module. I'm going to search for it and I'm going to select it and I'm going to paste my text in here like that click on design, make sure that our text is set to light, or you can come over here and set it to white if you, if you, if you, if that's easier for you. Now our font is going to be set to Arvo just to keep that consistency with what we have here at the top. Okay. So for our text size here, we're going to set this to 30. We're going to center it. Okay. So next I'm going to save this for now. And then we're going to center this row. So I'm going to come over into the row settings click on design, alignment, center. And for the sizing, we're gonna make this full width. Okay, so that's looking better. So I'm gonna save this for now. And then next I'm gonna add some more text. So I'm gonna add this, click this plus button here to add our text module. Add our text. And we need to come over here to the design and make some changes. So here we're gonna uh, change this to white and off 
our font here is going to be Leto and the size 14 is fine and this needs to be centered. And then next we need to um, make our adjustments to our divider here. So I'm going to click this gear icon, make sure I have the right sizes for the top and the bottom. So let's start off with the top. I'm going to click here on design. So the color is fine at black. Uh, on the styles, it's solid into the top. That's fine. And then on the sizing here, so this needs to be three. And then here for the weight, it's going to be zero. And the width is going to be set at 20. But again, as I mentioned, you can set this to whatever size that suits you. But I'm going to leave it at 20. And then this is going to be aligned all the way to the right. And then I'm going to go ahead and save. So I'm going to need another one below that. So I'm going, to, I'm going to clone this and I'm going to drag it below like that. And then I'm going to go into the settings and just make sure that uh, it's aligned to the left. So if I come over here to styles, in fact, to spacing, to sizing, and then we need to align it to the left like that. You can see here that we have a lot of spacing because we cloned this from um, from the top one. So we just need to make sure that we come back in here and remove that uh, 200 margin. So we're going to come over here to spacing and remove that. So that's looking better already. Okay, so what we need to do next is to add our text module below this image and also add our social media follow buttons. So I'm going to save. And then we're going to click this plus button here to add our text module. Like that. We're going to come in here, paste the text, make sure that it's centered. And because this is a, a dark background, let's change the text to white. Like that. We're going to save for now. And then I'm going to add another module. And this time it's the social media follow. Select it. And as we did before, we're just going to add all our social media icons. So I'm going to start with Facebook. And then I'm going to add Twitter. And finally, I'm going to add LinkedIn. And then come over here to our design. And then we're just going to go back into the design and make sure that this is aligned center. Okay, so next we are going to align our row to the left. So we're going to come over here into the uh, row settings. Click on design, alignment, and then we're going to align this to the left. Okay, so for now I'm going to go ahead and save. And we can see here that our design is taking shape. Now, if you want to uh, design this row for the mobile device, all you have to do is to repeat the process that we did here on the second section. And all you have to do is to clone it and then you need to move these to the right just to swap them around and then disable them for the necessary sections. So for now I'm going to go ahead and save and then we're going to take a look at our final design. So I'm going to come over here and click on Exit Visual Builder and this is our final design. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new videos similar to what you've seen today. Until next time, thanks for watching and see you soon.